I feel like a lot of the newer, younger life sound engineers don't really use compression at all, or if they do, they don't fully understand how compressor works. So in this video, I'm gonna explain everything you need to know about compression, what is the threshold, me, ratio, attack time, release time, how to use the sidechain function. I'm also gonna talk about parallel compression and some tips about using a limiter, which is just a compressor with a high ratio. So let's get into it. I already gated and EQ'd the channels because this is just about compression. Now I'll send the drum channels to a subgroup and do the compression on that bus or subgroup because personally I think that it is better to do it this way, especially live, because drum microphones pick up other sounds from stage and even if you are gating them, the compression will bring up that noise that you don't want. Okay, so if you do it on every channel, it will add up. It's a bit cleaner to do it on a bus overall. Now, if a channel causes a problem, yes, you can deal with it on its own. Now, these channels are going to the main left and right, but I want to send them to a subgroup. So I'm going to select each one of them individually and turn off the main stereo button. Now, none of them are going to the main left and right. I will select bus number one and go to the home page and link it to bus number two. Confirm. Now, this is a stereo pair. I still need to go to the configuration page of that bus and say that it's a subgroup and confirm. Now, I need to send it to the main left and right because it's not going anywhere right now. So, I'm going to select it and turn on the main stereo button. And finally, I want to send the channels to that bus. So I'm going to click on flip fader while the bus is selected and unmute these channels. Only the drum channels without the bass. And turn off this again. A subgroup and a post fader bus are almost the same thing. Everything takes effect on the channel, including the fader position. The only difference is that with the subgroup, you mix with the actual faders of the channels, like the main left and right. But with the post fader bus, you mix with the sends. And for this case, it makes more sense to just use a subgroup. Now, for the parallel compression bus, you can use a post fader bus if you want to send different amounts of each channel to that bus. What Let's not get ahead of ourselves, we'll get to that. Now let's start with actually how the compressor works. I'm gonna select that subgroup and go to the compressor, turn it on and click on view. And the threshold, the simplest way I can explain it is that signal that is coming into the compressor. How loud should it be before the compressor starts working? Because right now the threshold is very high, the compressor is not doing anything at all. If I lower the threshold, the compressor will start working. If it's too low, then the compressor is working all the time and compressing all the signal, which probably sounds very bad. Okay, now once the signal reaches that threshold or passes it, the compressor starts working. But how much should it compress or push down that signal that is above the threshold? That is called the ratio. The higher the number on the ratio right here, the more compression you will get. The lower the number, the less compression you will get. And the ratio only affects the signal that is above the threshold, not the entire signal. Okay, so in other words, the signal that's coming into the compressor, if it's four decibels higher than the threshold, then the output signal that is going out of the compressor will only be one decibel above the threshold. Okay, so for every 20 dBs that go above the threshold, only one decibel will get through. That's what it means. It's not affecting the whole signal. It's not that if the signal is 20 dB, then it will come out just 1 dB. It's only for the signal that is above the threshold. If the original signal is very consistent and controlled, you will use a lower number on the ratio because you know that if it goes above the threshold, it will not go too much above the threshold. It will not peak. Whereas if the original signal is very dynamic, someone, for example, who sings, sometimes is very quiet, sometimes is very loud, then you know that when it goes above the threshold, if it's too loud above the threshold, then it will be too loud after the threshold. So you use a higher ratio to bring down that signal that is going above the threshold. So it's more controlled. This bend right here, this is called the knee of the compression. Okay, so the threshold is at which point the compressor starts working. The ratio is how much it compresses. 
and the knee, if I go to the second page right here, this is the knee. The knee means that if it's zero, it means that as soon as the signal hits that point, it will start compressing. If the knee is one, it will start a little bit earlier than that threshold point and will be in full effect a little bit later than the threshold point. And the higher the knee, the smoother the curve. Okay, so if you have a very high knee, it will start a lot earlier than that threshold point and will be in full effect later than that threshold point. If the knee is zero, it will start exactly at that point. So use a lower number on the knee or a sharper knee if you're compressing something like drums with a lot of attack, if you want them to sound punchy. And if you're compressing something like an acoustic guitar, for example, and you want it to sound smooth, use a higher number on the knee, a smoother knee, because you don't want the compression to be very noticeable. The sharper the knee, the more noticeable the compression is, the softer the knee, the softer that transition between the non-compressed and the compressed signal. Let's go back to the first page and let's talk about the attack, hold and release times. And the attack and release are arguably the most important thing about compression. If you get this wrong, then everything will sound off. Now, fortunately on this console, you have an auto function, which if you press, it will take care of the attack and release times. And it sounds fine in most cases if you're not used to hearing compression or you don't have time to fiddle around and see what sounds nicer. But let's see how you can take control of this. So the attack time, if it's a fast attack or a low number, it means that the compressor is immediately grabbing onto the signal as soon as the signal gets in. Okay, so if you have something with a lot of transients, a lot of attack like drums, a low number will make them sound very soft. It will kill the transient. It will hold this transient or peak. As soon as it gets in, it will squish it down. This is bad for drums. For anything that has a lot of transients and attack, you want to have a higher number. Now, a good number to start with is 10 milliseconds. Maybe for drums, you want to have it more like 15 milliseconds. Okay, you have to actually listen to it and hear what sounds nicer, but definitely not a lower number. A lower number, if you want to kill the attack, use a lower number. Now, for the release, the release means after that initial hit, how long does it take the compressor to release that signal, to let go, okay? And you wanna make sure that when you're compressing, the release time should be fast enough to where it's letting go of the signal before the next hit. If it's still compressing, if this dot is still above the threshold, that means that the release time is very long. The compressor doesn't have enough time to let go of the signal, so we want a faster release. Now, keep in mind, don't have a very fast release because that might sometimes distort. It will sound like it's chopping up the signal. Okay, so just fast enough to release the signal before the next hit comes. And the hold is how much time the compressor holds onto the signal before releasing it. So the attack, how fast it grabs the signal. The hold is how long it holds onto it, it stays grabbing it. And the release is after the hold, how long does it take to let go of the signal? And when you're done with all these settings on the compressor, you might want to bring up the gain, the output gain or the makeup gain of that compressor because compression does make the signal quieter because you're pushing down the peaks. Okay, so you're pushing down the peaks and you use the makeup gain to bring all the signal up again. So there's no difference in loudness. And I'm gonna show you an example so you can actually hear what the attack and release times are doing.
Now I know it's a little bit difficult to be able to hear the compression at first because you don't really know what you're listening to, but with time it will get better. And the thing is that you have to actually put in practice what you're learning. It's not enough to know how it works. You have to actually do it a lot to become better at it. Now you saw me pressing some buttons that we didn't talk about, so let's talk about them right now. Under ratio you have compressor and expander. An expander is the complete opposite of a compressor. So a compressor compresses, squishes down, makes the signal less dynamic. An expander expands the signal, makes it more dynamic. Now, in my own personal experience, I don't have a lot of use for an expander because it's basically the same thing as a gate, this one. But a gate doesn't exist on a bus. Okay, gates only exist on channels. So on a bus, you don't have a gate you may want to use an expander for some reason, but I don't think there is that much use to it. The next thing is peak versus RMS under the attack. This means that peak is grabbing the peak, the highest level of the signal and compressing it. RMS is basing the compression on the average overall loudness of the signal. And when it comes to these things, you have to actually try it and listen to it, see what sounds better. There's no one correct answer. But I can tell you that on more attack-based instruments like drums that have a lot of transients, you might want to use peak. On less attacky instruments, you may want to use RMS. You have to try and listen to see what sounds nicer. Again, there's no one answer that is correct. And linear versus log, we as humans perceive sound in a logarithmic way. So for example, if you're doing a frequency sweep, if you have a logarithmic trajectory, it will sound more consistent throughout all the frequencies. If you have a linear trajectory, it will sound like it's going faster on the lower frequencies than it is on the high frequencies. So a log trajectory means that the sound is perceived by us more consistently. A linear trajectory might sound different a bit faster or a bit slower on different parts of that signal so most of the time don't worry about it you don't need to fully understand that but just keep it on log okay and try it out if you like the linear sound better use linear it's up to you you have to try it and listen to it to see which sounds nicer now let's talk about the sidechain function on the compressor i have a bass guitar right here and i have a kick drum and maybe I feel that the bass is clashing too much with the kick drum, so I want to side chain the bass to the kick drum. So whenever the kick drum hits, the bass gets pushed down or compressed. So I'm going to select the bass and put a compressor on it, then go to the second page right here and set the key source as channel 1, which is the kick drum. Okay, now I want to turn down the threshold to get some compression. And now whenever the kick hits, the bass gets compressed. If the kick does not hit, the bass does not get compressed, okay? Because it's not looking at its own signal, it's looking at the signal from the kick drum. Now maybe I don't want the entire signal of the kick drum to trigger the compressor of the bass. I want a part of it, maybe only the high frequencies. I'll select this one or maybe just the low frequencies. I'll select this one and this number right here, six, is a 6 dB per octave, meaning that the slope is not very steep. 12 is 12 dB per octave, it's steeper. So if you set a low cut, the compressor on the bass will only take into consideration the higher frequencies of the kick drum to base the compression off of. If you set a high cut, it will only take into consideration the lower frequencies. And you can select the frequency from here at which frequency it starts. So maybe I want only the low frequencies from the kick drum to compress the bass so I'll set it to maybe 100 Hertz okay and have it on high cut and maybe if you want to have one specific frequency that triggers that compression you're gonna select this one and the slope means how tight or the Q means how tight it is around that frequency the higher the number the tighter it is the lower the number, the wider it is. Also be better than me and remember to actually turn it on, okay? Because if you don't turn it on, it will not take effect. And you can also hit the solo button to listen to the range of frequencies you're selecting. Let's talk about parallel compression. 
Usually with parallel compression, the thing you want to do is have a very fast attack to kill the transient. So the sound almost doesn't have a transient and it's just... So the energy of the drums come out, you can press it a lot, you maybe EQ it in a way to cut the low frequencies and a bit of the high frequencies. So it's just the mid-range that is... I'll show you how instead of... I want to send these channels to bus 3 and 4 to have a parallel bus, so I'm going to select bus 3. Go to the home page, link it to bus number four, and this is now a stereo pair. I want to hit flip fader and unmute the channels of the drums to go to that bus, then turn this off again and make sure it's on the main stereo. So it goes to the main left and right. Now the drums are going twice to the main left and right. That's not good. Let's mute one of them for now and let's work on the parallel bus. I'm going to turn on the compressor. Hit view and bring down the threshold a lot and up the ratio a lot. And the attack time, I want to make it very fast, zero. So it's immediately grabbing onto the transients. And for this case, I'm going to select peak because RMS lets go of the transients a little bit. So I'm going to select peak to kill the transients and no hold at all and a slower release time. I'm gonna also bring the gain up to compensate for that lack of volume. Okay, now let's unmute the first bus. And maybe do some EQ on it, cut some low frequencies, cut some of the annoying frequencies, and that will be it. Now, if you wish to use an insert from the effects track as a compressor on the bus, you're gonna run into a phasing problem because the inserts have delay and that delay is not accounted for with the console. Whereas the built-in compressor on the bus, on the console, on any channel or any bus, the built-in compressor is accounted for. So there's delay compensation from the console. And I'll show you what happens if you use an insert and I'll show you also the solution. First off, I wanna turn off the compressor on that bus. So I'm gonna turn it off, then go to the effects rack and go to effect number five and say that it's a let's say a Fairchild compressor and I'm gonna put it on bus number three and four and I'm gonna turn it on see what happens you are listening to both of them one alone is fine, the other alone is fine, but both of them together, it's phasing and that's terrible. Now to fix this, you're gonna also put that same insert on the other bus. So I'm gonna select the Fairchild compressor. and put it on bus number one and two. And I'm gonna insert it, but on bus number one and two, which is the original bus, I'm gonna turn it off. Okay, so now the compressor is on both this and this bus, both the initial bus and the parallel bus, but on the initial bus, it is turned off, okay? And this fixes the phasing problem. Also be mindful of where that insert is in the signal chain. By default, it's before the EQ. Maybe you want to put it after the EQ, that's up to you. And when it comes to using limiters, why would you use a limiter and when would you use a limiter? First of all, a limiter is a compressor with a very high ratio. So you can just use the built-in compressor and turn the ratio up to 100 and that basically would be a limiter or you can use a limiter insert. If you're sending your mix 
to broadcast television, you need to use the limiter because the live mix is just too dynamic and the limiter compresses the signal, crushes it a little bit to make it louder to be appropriate for broadcast. So the same tips apply to a limiter. First of all, if the attack is too fast, you're basically softening the entire signal, you're killing the transients. So make the attack a bit slower and also the release. If it's too fast, it will sound distorted. It will sound chopped up. So make it a bit slower, but not too slow to where it keeps grabbing onto the signal fast enough to where it's releasing the signal before the next hit. If you found this video helpful, consider hitting the like button, I would appreciate that very much. And click right here to learn how to do two different mixes, one for broadcast and one for the live audience on the same console. Click right here.